All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Today we are going to take a look at converting models, 3DS models in particular, um, from the FBX format. And what you see here is just a model I found on one of the free model sites. <laughs> this one's really cool. It's called the Alien Queen. And I have it open in the FBX viewer, in the FBX converter. So um, you can get this from Autodesk. Just get the FBX converter because you're going to need this sooner or later. <laughs> so get it done now. Anyway, I opened up this file in here and it is a cool model. And a lot of free models are posted on the internet. And some of the best sites to go to are 3delicious.com, um, 3D Extras, and Archive 3D Net. So look for those. Um, those are kind of three main model sites where you can find a ton of really great models. But anyway, there's a lot of problems with bringing these into Maya and sort of converting them and getting them, you know, prepped and stuff. So I want to kind of take you through the workflow or the process of, of how to create a, an asset library or, you know, just get a whole bunch of models that you might need for this or that along the way. Now, a lot of these are free models, but you really have to pay attention to um, some of the things that come attached to these um, uh, models. For example, with this one right here, even though it was on a free model site, if I read the text, <clears throat> okay, this one is a, a, based on a commercial available uh, plastic model. And you can see that uh, the notes for this, um, he says we need at least one subdivision, blah, blah. But anyway, this model may be used for non-commercial work only. All copyrights belong to me. So you really have to look at who the artist is and maybe where you can get a hold of them um, through their, their mail. So anyway, if you want to use it commercially, be aware that sometimes these models, even though they come from a free site, are not necessarily uh, commercially viable. Um, you have to, you know, you should make an arrangement to use the model and pay the model maker accordingly. Anyway, this one is by um, Franz M and um, antaresi th at gmx.de. So take a screenshot of that if you want to use this commercially. Anyway, just so you, something to be aware of. Now let's take a look at this FBX viewer. Uh, I'm going to, let's minimize this guy. We have two windows in this FBX viewer and we can kind of size them, you know, accordingly, whatever you want to do. I usually just put them in the interface up here. And now we're ready to kind of look at models and see what uh, see what might be good and what, what might be bad. Now, if you don't have these open, if you open up the FBX viewer and you get a blank screen like this, just check on the little FBX converter right there and then size out your window accordingly to where you want it. And then click on the Add FBX Viewer and that adds a little viewer right here. So now we can kind of take a look at our various models. Um, I usually make a master model folder and put everything I download into there and then I categorize them by where I, I got the models from. <clears throat> so in this case I have three different you know sources and I create an unzipped and zipped folder inside of you know that source and then basically when you get these models they'll all be zipped so they're all going to be zip files or rar files or something like that so that's why I put them in a folder like this that way I can just sort of open them all up and then put the unzipped version in the unzipped folder. So in that case, that's that's what I've got here. So I just downloaded a whole bunch of models. And if I look at what I downloaded, here's one that's just called the 20th, whatever. OK, it's the 20th Century Fox original. But this is a .max file. And so what I really need to do with a .max file is take it into 3ds Max first and save it out as a .3ds file because that's all this viewer is is working with is is a .3ds file. So if I click on here and look at some of these other ones, there's another .max. Um, here's an airlock, and this airlock it does have 3ds um, extensions to it. So I might want to click on there and then just drag and drop this right in here into the viewer. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to load up into the viewer, so be patient. But once you get that going there, you can kind of take a look and see, you know, what your model looks like. And indeed, we have that part. I might want to click on this one down here and put that in here. 
and see what see what's up with that okay so there's our door and then here's our other door uh, we'll go back up into here there's the other door okay great well it's all complete and I can kind of work with that now if I click on the next one down this one's the Queen 3DS that was the one we were just looking at I'm gonna drag and drop it into the window and there's our model so it's good to work with let's take a look at the next one down and see what the am not bot looks like <laughs> okay we'll drop that in there all right good so all these are coming out kind of good um, let's look at some of these other ones here's an arm cruiser but this one just has some light wave and some max files so I, I'm not gonna mess with that one here's a desert buggy that's a 3ds I might drag and drop that in there all right so there's some models are better than others um, this one doesn't look too complex um, it doesn't look too detailed so I'm not too excited about that one I might just let that one go but you get the idea you can kind of come through here and look for your 3ds files and let's see what this one is ed209 all right and I like that one too okay that looks like a pretty good model so now that we've isolated a couple of models and this is going to work for almost everything that you do this workflow um, I want to basically choose those models that that I liked so we'll go back to here and we'll, we'll look at this uh, ED uh, the 20th century that was a max file that was a max file let's say we choose these airlocks I'm just going to go ahead and select all three of those and drop them into this window over here for conversion and it's going to make a conversion to a .fbx and put it back in this same folder so we can find it later. So I'm going to go to the Alien Queen. I'm going to grab that file. We're going to put that one in there. Well, it didn't go. Okay. Let's see. Drag and drop that one in there. Okay. And we'll do that little bot. We'll bring that one in there. And we're good to go. And in this case, I think... Uh, let's look at this hatch um, this hatch we'll look at that and see I, I've needed a hatch okay so that looks like a cool hatch let's work with that I'm gonna go ahead and drag that and drop it in there okay so now that we have some some files chosen that we want to convert I usually look at it this way I want the textures if if there are textures but generally textures are never gonna come in the way you think they are so <laughs> it, it's a crapshoot so we'll take those two animation I don't need animation I want to leave the mesh because of course I want the mesh but I don't necessarily want to import lights or cameras or any other information sometimes you can mess around with the convert units um, this is also a, a mystery as to how it's going to come in unit wise but we're going to work with that later so don't worry about it just leave that checked and then uh, split normals is okay and we're good to go over here we, ha we have various um, you know formats we can save it in we can save it in a binary or ascii um, i'll just leave it at the standard um, binary and I can go ahead and embed media um, because sometimes that may or may not make a difference. <laughs> it, it all depends on what you're working with over here. So anyway, you can go ahead and feel free to leave that checked. Okay, well now I'm going to hit convert. And as I convert, you'll see that it's converting all of those files. And they just um, opened up as an FBX file over where our 3DS file was. So those are in our main folder. So now we have a an FBX version of this 3DS file as well. Now we're ready to go over to Maya and see what happens. So let's let's work with some of these in 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 Maya and and I'm going to show you bringing them in and what the problems are that you're going to have almost consistently across the board forever. <laughs> okay? But first uh, for a break for your mind, go over and see lesterbanks.com because he has great tutorials on almost um, everything here. You got Maya tutorials, After Effects, Cinema 4D, Blender, I don't know, you need tons of stuff for your brain. So always a good place to go and, and nice animation stuff that he finds on the internet every day. So thanks, Lester. <laughs> okay, let's go on here and let's see. We're gonna open up Maya. And what I wanna do in Maya is just sort of start a new scene. So go ahead and open up a new scene and then what we want to do is we want to import those those files so I'm gonna to go to file and we're gonna to go to import and I think what I'll do is just check and make sure that I have my file type import option set at FBX which is cool 
and we'll just go ahead and hit import and you're going to get another window the your basic import window and in this case it's on my desktop and I think those were under models uh, may something models assorted may 3d extras unzipped and we had the airlock which has FBX files in here but right now you see that I'm they're grayed out and I can't open them up and in some cases if you're on a Mac this might happen to you if you're on a PC it's gonna be different but I need to come in here to the files of type and I need to set this to FBX but watch what happens when I do this I'm gonna set FBX and now it goes back to the beginning of the file tree <laughs> okay so that can be annoying so just remember to always choose FBX uh, first from your file types then you can come down and come into your wherever you have your files stored I've got mine stored here and we're gonna go we'll do this airlock first and now you can see where I have the choices to choose this airlock and I'm gonna go ahead and just choose the first one in there and I'm gonna hit open and then you'll normally get a window like this that comes up and basically just leave it at defaults um, I don't really want any of this stuff but necessarily lights or cameras are not coming in. I have this set at automatic because it doesn't really matter no matter what you do uh, you know you're always gonna have to mess with this scale so we're gonna get to that in a minute so great I'm gonna go ahead and hit import and there it is I can see where it's showing up if I scroll out a little bit there's that there's that thing alright so I'll go ahead and sorta of go into shaded mode take a look at it and I like it let's bring it down a little smaller to fit everything on the grid for the moment so the, and the main thing you want to do right now before you do anything else is take a look at what it says in the outliner you want to kind of look at the parts and see what kind of parts you have in the outliner here and in this case I have have some various parts here's this one which is basically the overall structure here is this part which is sort of like these insets and then this one right here which doesn't really lead to anything uh, unless I go into x-ray mode it might might be able to see something but okay so I can't really tell what the heck that is but I know that it's all there alright so I may want to do one of two things I'll go ahead and grab all of these elements and you want to make sure that you're displaying go to your check DAG objects only because we just want to see what's important to this scene okay so I'm gonna check in there and I'm gonna select I'm basically just gonna select everything and I'll want to group those okay and I'll group these as just airlock group airlock and just do a group okay now I have them kind of isolated into a group where I can go ahead and scale everything globally so I'm gonna go ahead and scale that down now and kind of bring it into there alright and that looks pretty good for the moment um, I know I can do some texturing and things with it later but um, you know for the moment it just is the basic structure which is great okay I'm gonna come out of x-ray mode and it looks like that's about it but what you want to do is look over here at, at your scale and everything in in these values now um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose that outliner again because I want to make sure I've selected the group uh, let's go down to there okay I'm gonna select this whole airlock group and once you select that group node that now gives you an establishing scale and you want this to be at one because we want everything to kind of be consistent and that's why we're doing this conversion process so I'm gonna leave that alone there and I'm gonna basically come over here and modify and freeze the transformations and you'll notice what that did to the scale over here we're now at a scale of one okay so that's good that that way it's consistent every time we bring this into a Maya project or import it into a scene it'll show up on the grid basically sized out like that so you can still scale it up or down from there but in this case we'll go ahead and, and leave it right there now because there's two other parts to this model I might want to basically import those as well so I'm gonna come down here to import and I'm going to go back make sure I set this to FBX first and then I want to import this door number one right here okay so we're going to import that door 
and it's going to go and give us this window and I'm just going to go ahead and hit import and it's giant just like it was in the previous version so I'll go ahead and, and sort of look at this group real quickly open up the outliner always open the outliner and find out what's going on in there so we're going to name this door so I'm going to select all three of these and we're going to group those and we're just going to call this door one all right so we'll call it door uh, door one group all right door one group good enough and we'll go ahead and scale that while we're at it so let's take that and we'll scale it down and you can see where it's scaling directly down here on the on the grid and you know you're gonna have to mess with these doors to get them uh, aligned and and properly you know set up so I think what I'll do is just leave this one a little large for right now and I'll, I'll kind of leave it kind of just like that but I'm going to go ahead and, and set this scale and, and modify the transformations here. We'll freeze the transformations. And now it's scaled at 1. And we're ready to do the next door. So we'll go ahead and do File. And we'll go to Import. And we're going to go to the FBX. And we're going to import that next door. So that was door number 2. And I'm going to go to Open. And I'll just go to Import. And there's our other door. And in this case, I want to go ahead and select it first and make sure that we've isolated, you know, the various portions in, in the outliner here. And we want to group those and label these door number two. All right, door two group. All right. Now we'll go ahead and scale that while we're at it. So we'll just take the scale here. And we'll scale it way down. And I may leave it a little oversized just so I can scale it later. But anyway, basically everything is there. So I'll go ahead and modify and freeze those transformations. Now, I could always um, do one of two things. Um, I could redo the center pivot and things like that. But we'll do that on, on something else. But I just want to make you aware that sometimes you need to redo the center pivot of your items. But now we have ni three nice groups, and we're basically ready to save this scene. So we'll go ahead and do a file and save scene. And we'll call this one, say, airlock. And I'll go ahead and instead of putting it in my old folder, I'll navigate to a folder that, that I want to save that in. In this case, I think it's going to be my master folder and my master default folder under models and in this case uh, I can eh, I could make a new folder and call it 3d net or whatever but I think in in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and just save this to my desktop because I don't want to navigate all over the place here for you okay so we've got that one now let's do another one let's go to file and go to new scene and we'll go back and we'll import that other one um, we're going to import the, let's see, that queen. So we'll find out what that one's all about. I have no idea of, <laughs> no idea what's happening there. So we'll come back. I'll go to my desktop. I'm going to come down, navigate to the folder where it's at, which is in my sorted May. It's in there, unzipped, and the alien queen. But I forgot to choose FBX. So now course I'm gonna to have to go back to the file tree over here go back down to my folder and there we go go back and you'll be doing this all the time okay <laughs> it's just sort of a process that you get used to and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit import and really it's a redundant thing you know everything that we're doing here is redundant now Let's look at this model. I'm going to go way out here. You can see where sometimes you have to scroll way out. And when you do, it disappears. And that's probably one of the most annoying things about, about this. But here's what, how we have to fix that. First, come over into your outliner and select your perspective camera. And we want to go into the, um, I'm going to go into the tabs here into the attribute editor and we want to increase this far clip plane so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a zero in here alright and that should let us 
get everything in there, it just gives us a little more room to back up. So we're increasing that far clip plane. Now that we have that, I'll go ahead and, and sort of go into shaded mode here. And we're going to want to resize this down to the grid. So let's look at the outliner first, as always, and see what kind of parts we, we've got going on in here. Um, I'm going to kind of roll through a couple of those. We have this one, which is the overall group. And then if we go down and we can find that there are some other, there are some other shapes in here that we can work with. And let's see here. Yeah, so we got legs, we got arms, we got tails. All right, so we have some nice parts we can work with, and that is cool. All right, so what we'll do is we will just sort of leave this alone right here. But let's take a look, let's activate it and click on this root node so everything is activated. And I'm going to come over here and we're going to want to look and see what these values say. And right now, everything's at zero, the scale's at one. So I'll go ahead and choose my scale tool and we'll just start scaling this down. Okay, I'm going to scale them down because we want to fit it on the grid. Everything should be on the grid because when this comes in, if you import it into another, you know, Maya file, uh, you're going to get some wackiness going on. It's going to be huge. <laughs> All right, so let's just get this down a little bit like that. And there we go. Okay, so pretty well centered out on the grid. You can see where the origin is kind of right in the center of that model, which is, which is cool. So it's coming in pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. But look at what happened to our scale values now. They're down to 0 0.0001. And we actually want that to be a scale of 1. Because when we bring this into, you know, import it into another, you know, scene, we want it to come in so that we can kind of have control of it and it's not all whacked out. All right. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to come up here and go to Modify. And I think what we'll do is modify, we'll freeze the transformations. And now that has a scale of one and everything looks pretty good. Now, what I might want to do with this is do a quick render. There was a Buddha I was rendering before. I'm going to go ahead and do a render and see what happens. Okay, well, that looks, you know, what it, what it should look like. But really, it's not, I don't know, we can work with this a lot. And the first thing I might want to do you know, just for, for fun to get a, a good grip on how this thing might look as in a scene. I might want to move my render size up to 720 and maybe make my quality something more like production, just standard production quality. So I'll switch it from draft to production. And now we can take another render. And now we can get a pretty good idea of what that model's looking like. Sometimes you have to size your window up a bit so you don't get the jaggy edges but that looks pretty cool um i'm going to look at the materials on this for a second and another thing you'll be doing quite a bit is coming over into the hyper shade and in this case we only have a couple of materials um that are on on this object so we have one here um we may want to look at that and say well it's just a standard material it just gives us a color we can bring that color up or down. Um, let's see, color up now. We could change that color. Um, it also has reflectivity on, which for right now, we could just sort of bring the reflectivity off. And we may do the same thing for this material as well. It has a reflective value of one. I might want to bring that down. Maybe, maybe bring this white down a little bit. And now we could do another render over here. We'll save that one, do another quick render. And now we can kind of see the object a little better. Okay, so that looks pretty good for saving and working with later. And, you know, if you want to rig it or something like that, of course, that's a whole tutorial for another day. But let's move on. I'm going to go ahead and save this one as the Alien Queen. So we'll go, well, first, what we want to do, uh, part of the workflow, let's make sure we select that object. And everything is set there, so we did we did everything right. We've got to make sure that this is, has a scale of one. And we'll go to File, and we'll go ahead and save that scene. And I'll just call this one the Alien Queen. 
All right, Alien Queen, save it to my desktop, wherever. There it is, and there it is. Okay, so maybe we should try one more, and I think I'll, I'll do one that, that gave me some problems before. So I'll go ahead and import, well, actually, what I'm gonna do is start a new scene. So I'm gonna go to File, New Scene, and I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna go to File, Import, and in this case, I'm gonna go back to my desktop. I'm gonna make sure I set it on FBX. And I'm gonna come down here to the, my folder where I had everything. Where did they go? There they are, May. I think I'll come in here, we'll go to Unzipped. And in this case, I have some various models here that had some problems. Let's try out the snake. This was a, a snake model that I converted. Let's do the import. Okay, so I imported that, but I don't see it. Where did it go? Well, if I scroll way out, there he is. All right, so I might want to go into the mode there. And in this case, I want to look over here first in the outliner, as always, and check out what we've got. There's a lot of different elements that... Um, that are in there that we can use for texturing and stuff later. So uh, the more elements there are individually, the better off your your task of, you know, texturing is going to be and working with this model. So this one's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. Well, I'll select the whole model and I'm going to go ahead and bring this down in scale. So I'll just scale it down and bring it back down there, come up here. And as you can see, I'm scaling from the origin on the grid. So, so that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and stay with that. And I'm also going to go to Modify, and I'm going to freeze those transformations because that gives us a scale of 1, and everything looks good. Now, let's look at this guy a little closer. Um, you can see where some things came out <clears throat> kind of wonky. Uh, definitely you're going to go through this all the time and you're going to have to figure out what is going wrong. Here's a tooth. It should be going up that way. So we could take this one and, you know, maybe do some quick adjustments. We'll just rotate it around a little bit there. <clears throat> and you get the idea. You're going to have to do this a lot because sometimes the model conversion is not a perfect process. Okay, so there it is. And up here, you can see where these guys right here, they're all out of whack. They should be sort of coming off the back like that. So in this case, I might want to spin those around. Maybe come in here at a different angle. Sort of, sort of spin those a bit. Let's get up there. And they may have to be moved in just a little bit. So anyway, nothing's going to be perfect with this process, but you will get used to it, and this will help you build a great asset library um, anytime you're, you're doing this stuff. So there it is. Let's take a quick render, see what this guy looks like. And because I started a new scene, it defaults back to my 640 by 480, but yeah, I can tell that's looking pretty good. So anyway... Um, that's about it. If you file, uh, follow that, that path um, of bringing models in, um, things will be easy. So now you can build a huge library and you can make cool scenes. I did this one. I did this scene basically with a bunch of, you know, models that I just imported. I found this cool projector and just, you know, <laughs> just did a quick interior scene. And this is basically, um, you know, I downloaded some free texturing and stuff. And we'll get into this some of this stuff later. But anyway, that's, uh, that's about it. Okay. Sorry I've rambled on for so long. But you have to see the process and kind of know what you're looking for and just do it methodically. Okay. So there you go. Hope you learned something. And as always, read a book because it's good for your brain. And uh, yeah, be a nice person, of course. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, have a good week.